So my name is Josh Samuel, 56 James Court. And so it seems to me the issue is that uh, the town council wants to pr uh, prepare a factual uh, letter or something to insert with this vote. And, and my concern is, is that the facts uh, are not all known and the facts are as certain people see it. And if you're going to prepare a factual letter addressing uh, uh, the ballot initiative, uh, you need to present all the facts. You can't you can't just present what you perceive as misstatements as fact. And uh, that's very important. Uh, I think there's people here that feel that things were misrepresented. And there are there are there are facts that the council hasn't looked at. If you're going to prepare this letter, you must include all these facts, uh, not just the one sided or the agreed upon facts that the town council comes away with. Uh, there's there's things here that have not been reviewed. There's things that have not been agreed to. There's things with zoning. There are unanswered questions. Uh, these, uh, there are no answers to those because they're not facts yet. You haven't spent the time to look at that. So, uh, if you're going to prepare this letter, it just can't be facts that the town council agrees to. It has to be all the facts so that the voters can make an informed decision. Well, and, well again, it's just our position. I mean, cause you've been given the facts both sides cause it's, we, it's been going on. So, so Josh, you know, it's been, and I appreciate that, but. Again, this isn't a debate. This is just no, I, I applying for everybody. I, I, what is actual? Not we're not making up anything. We're just but you're about zoning. but you're clarifying it, a, a small portion of those facts as no. you see it, and that's the no, not as I see it is is how it is how uh, how it is. Well, there's there's there is dispute to how it is, and uh, there's people well, that are representing that uh, your own staff has not answered some of these questions correctly, which skews the facts that you're trying to present a letter to. Okay. And I think that that's, I, I'm, I'm just saying that if you're gonna prepare a factual letter to be inserted, you must make well, sure no. that what you're saying is factual. Correct. And that's how we got here tonight, is yes. that we agreed if we could come up with something and on a, in an ideal world for me, this would be hearing from everyone, hearing what the real facts are, and in, in something neutral, as in a statement that says the town of Dillon encourages you all to vote. And here are the facts that everyone in this room can agree upon. And, so and that that's way your it is idea. There are seven of us on this council, okay, and I, your idea is one. That's right. And, and that's right. And, and you, you're not you all, to all as a majority can definitely push forward whatever you want in, in the face of the public who would like to anything. speak. But, why, but why don't we why don't you. OK, Josh, please. Can you sit I down? Understand. Thank you. No. Sure. So here it is. Um, there have been, I don't know if you're aware, there have been a number of strategies employed by the town staff. Uh, the ballot information sheet, having a pitch for the town is unprecedented. That, that, that instead of the pro and con, that ballot sheet has a pitch for the view of the town staff and has uh, half of it is promotional text for the development. The blue book that went out had a for and against section. There's a for and against section, but a third, party, a third party statement is unheard of. The thing that I want to <laughs> mention most importantly, however, comes from Colorado, Colorado revised statutes, elections for municipalities. This is uh, Colorado Revised Statutes 31-11-111. It, it says, and because you are town council, this certainly affects you. The resolution, which I brought copies for everyone, if you wanna just pass this around. The resolution says that the ballot title, which are the words that you read before you wrote, before you mark yes or no on your ballot. The ballot title must be written by the legislative body of the town. Your ballot title was written by the town staff. You are in danger of being um, 
the town attorney's you, reviewed it. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it has to be written by the legislative attorney body of the. Well, we have the, an we have an attorney now, and he's been he's yeah, been helping. I know, but um, I'm just so, telling sorry. you what the Colorado but, revised statutes are, and if you if you pass it around, uh, you will see that this is the case. And I wanted to make that fact apparent to you in your discussions that you would be aware of it. I wish to be of service to you. Okay. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Yep. Great. Council. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys, well, what are your facts that you would like to push forward to the people? Um. Oliver's got some. John Woods sent me some since he's not here. Maybe it's helpful. Maybe it's helpful to put uh, have a brief discussion about a, a framework of this election coming up October one. <clears throat> there seems to be a choice of voting yes or no, of course. And I was one of the ones who, who thought that it made sense for us to try to draft something factual because I had talked to a number of my neighbors in Corinthian Hill <clears throat> who believed that a no vote meant that the Best Western would remain there and the transaction wouldn't take place and life would, would go on. And that's, I didn't think the case. So, um, I thought it was important for town council to take a step back and, and issue what we believe collectively uh, are the facts around this election, uh, because I want, and I think everybody would agree with, with this, we, we want a, an informed electorate to you know, choose yes or no. Whatever you want to choose, it's fine. But I think it's important to have an informed electorate. The framework i think that we could consider using is i think a fairly simple one and i've thought about it over the weekend which is if there's a no vote this is the result this is the upshot this is what would happen if there is a yes vote this is what would happen and i think we we're all people that live in a results oriented world so i think if you go and vote yes you're, you're expecting this to happen whatever this is and if you vote no you're expecting this to happen so that that may be just a framework that would be helpful um, for town council to, to come I up would with agree a with that statement. Yeah. Do Mayor, can I get in here? <clears throat> the framework for what your choice is this evening is established by the Fair Campaign Practices Act, and it's a resolution taking a position for or against the proposal before the voters. Um, the the same law provides for a factual summary akin to a blue book to be put out in connection with this ballot issue, but the town's already done that. So um, what you the choice you have before you is to approve or not an advocacy piece, which is if the facts are, as I mentioned in the memo to you all earlier, uh, yeah. usually the whereases begin with a factual statement, like the uh, build, the proposed project has an interior capacity of X square thousand square feet. And then that's followed by an opinion statement. We think that's too big. We don't think enough work has been done looking at this ahead of time. So the purpose of the resolution is to express council's position and it's quite common for there to be a split vote on these resolutions, of course, um, because not it's not common for an entire council to agree on something like this, especially on an issue where there's been a referendum. But the reason I had to jump in here is because the Fair Campaign Practices Act is very restrictive about what we can spend public money on in the way of material that would urge electors to vote for or against the proposed ballot issue. And the, the template that was just being discussed is not within the exception. So I'd have to advise against that as a violation of the law. Thank you. We don't want to violate the law, that's for sure. Well, no, it's, I have to deliver that kind of news. <laughs> so let's I take mean, a stab you... at it. What, which, what, what are the whereas statements we have prepared that you think would be appropriate for this council? 
Well, if we're limited to that, those kinds of statements, I'm not sure this is going to accomplish what we would hope. To well, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I, I, I think there's a whereas statement that would be very factual based on the votes that have taken place and the work that town staff has done regarding the preliminary steps that got us to this point. So I, I've been on council for three months. <laughs> so I'm not that familiar with the history. I went back and looked at minutes from the March 19th meeting, I think, and the, I don't know what, April right. whatever meeting. There were votes taken at those meetings regarding the procedural steps along the way, the, you know, the, for, for 626, et cetera, for the, for the PUD. So it seems like there's a factual statement that says, whereas the town council of Dillon has uh, approved I'm not sure it's twice or three times because there's different, you know, readings of this thing. Uh, approved uh, the PUD based on all the specifics of the PUD, which is the planned unit development, which is, you know, how high can this building be, how setbacks, all those specifics that were negotiated by the town with the developer. That that seems to me to be a factual whereas. Absolutely. That's, that's a very common, whereas the council approved this project on such and such a date, and whereas the planning commission previously had examined it, and whereas we took this into account and that into account, that'd be the kind of whereas, as you see in a resolution, um, supporting the earlier action of the council, in this case, and opposing just, the referendum. And that's just really a, a, a reminder of the procedural steps that were taken and voted on, approved, yada, yada, yada. Sure. Town Bye. staff recommendation to approve that as well. Right, and the, and the work the town staff did to negotiate that PUD, it's, it was a negotiation, right? Like most things in life. Which in and my- That seems to be a whereas that, that I, I would certainly support because I think that's important for Dillon Town residents to right. know that. And it was February, 2023 is what, when it started. So that's the notes that I have. and. If you don't control the meeting, Mayor. It is 100% clear that they didn't do so. They didn't even realize that it was four separate lots subject to a subdivision to abandon the lot rights, which then creates the demand for 10% of the property or 16,000 square feet to be designated open space and park which would provide your view corridor going down Lake Dillon Drive, which is the entire reason I hear that you all approve this. You can have restaurants, you can have the park, you can have the view corridor, and you can have a 35 foot high building, none of which Ned West okay. submitted in his zoning, current zoning summary in plan that the town council received. So we have to take a step back. Well, right now, the correct, excuse me, Ruth, we have to take a step back and have the correct information presented to the town council yes. so they can make a decision and everybody can make a decision. Well, that we ship are, has sailed. We made the decision. Now the voters are. The voters are now going to residential make high. It's not. It's not zoned for a park. So it's not. So it's not that. It, so let me, Laura. Let me take a stab at it. It's not. Let me take a stab at this. So we don't own that. We don't own that. No, 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 no. So here's how it should. Read it, please. At any rate, you have the current zoning right now on the county assessor is four separate. Lots. In order to build, if, if he doesn't get his PUD approved, in order to build across those lot lines right now, he's got center, he's got side, front, back, and side, and street side setbacks 20 feet on most sides. And he's got to abandon those lot lines through a subdivision application, which in your code, section 700 something, says that you have, he has to give 10% of the land to designated parks and open space, and that's 16,000 square feet, which is about the size of your park and view corridor along Lake Dillon Drive. And if you don't, today, 
if you don't have the correct information, how can you, one, intelligently, two, and two, ethically make a decision? And you got to go back to this March 17th submission from your town staff and see that it was done correctly, get the correct facts, see you can have the park, see you can have a smaller building. You can't have one bigger, larger building. It's not physically possible. And I am really sad to see this happen here. And I am sad that I am standing here in the back row reminding you of your responsibility, your due diligence, and your ethics as a town council. And first of all, even looking at this PUD. Could I Thank ask you. you a question, please? Is it true you do not live in the town of Dillon? I do live in the I'm town sure of Dillon, Mike right. Smith. I live at 334A Corinthian Circle. Thank you, Thank you very much. Does that recall if you used enough? So, okay. Do you agree with All that? All right. Let's agree with that, Mayor. We will we'll Mayor. turn this conversation back to a discussion. The first question, let me get back to Jeff. Do you Jeff's agree with email. that? Do you agree with that? that? Do you want to answer her question? Because I'd like to see your, if you believe that, if you the, give us if comment the, on that? I read a string of emails confirming that you information. Know the, is that true? With do Ned. you agree with her? Because I'd like to hear your, your feedback. Yes. I read her email chain with Ned. And okay, but Ned clarified it. Right, Correct. but not to the whole council. This was all done Ned, in just recent days. But Ned clarified it because I saw that email too. So why don't you why don't you respond to her? If you agree with her, then you should you should agree with her. I'm gonna keep I'm little, not gonna I'm not going to because, dive into this the can way I, you're can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Was there a response? I because I am curious about about this. This is, you know, my question is. Yes, I have. What was Ned's response to this issue that this might be this X out piece of information is not true, but that this bulleted pointed piece of information is in fact true and there is an error? What was the response? Does any, was there an email exchange? Let me see if I can get the email pulled up. If you have it printed, you're welcome well, to read it. But she just gave it. This is not Ned's response. No, no. This is. is I'm just. I guess we need to really confirm if, in fact, setbacks of the residential high zone district are set forth in DMC 16-23. Code states that the front yards and street side yards. This is what I have. Shall be 20 feet. So there's there's a link that. Well, my question is, what is the correct information from our code? And what? Is what and that is in your code. If it if it if it goes back the way it's zoned right now, is that what you're saying? Because it's zoned to residential high. Yeah. Right, I know that. I know. I know that. Thank you. 
commercial space there. We can have a restaurant. We don't have to have a 63 high foot building there. We can have a 35 foot building there and get all the open space and everything else in the commercial. The town said it wanted and gave up in exchange, gave up <coughs> to go 63 feet high in this massive building. And they gave that up for this open space and we can get it. it. This is a great thing for the town. We should all be clicking our heels. I'm wondering why this is just coming to light now. So we haven't. What was no, that, Jill. That's right, Jill. It was not Jill. Jill. And she answers all the questions, and he gave the information that Laura just gave to you. So, so the process for this meeting first: Do we feel a majority of us think pursuing a resolution is worth doing? Let's answer that. I think, in light of this information, without our technical town staff here, we need to have staff. We need to have answers. all these questions answered. I mean, there's no way we can even go forward with it because, Rachel? I mean, I, this, we'll let Rachel, 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 Rachel. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, I am new to the council as well. I, I've been, you know, maybe Thurma, I'm just wondering if there's a reason why. And if we, since we don't have Ned standing here, we can't ask him. Can you comment on that, um, Jeff? I'm sorry, I really can't. Um, it was new to me too. So without Ned here to um, tell us, I'm sure he responded to this and he may disagree. So I would like to hear from our town planner before we go too far down this road. I'm sure he's, you know, looked at this and has a response and I would like to know what that is. Um, it may or may not be an issue. We haven't heard from Ned. <laughs> By the way, that's one of the most popular things of that book this holiday thing. Okay. Now, you guys want to hear the rub on the whole thing? Well, we need our staff to respond to this uh first before we go too far down this road, because it may or may not be val a valid point. I don't know. I'm not the town planner. So, Rachel, you said wait. Is that what you said? Wait to but, until the facts are confirmed so we can. I get would like to know what Ned's response is to this because if um, I was prepared, you know, I was prepared to go forward with this work session to put factual statements in place based on the fact that way back a year and a half ago, this started being vetted by our staff. Yes. So. And then it also got approved by. And this may not change any of this. Well, that's we I, need I, to hear from Ned. And it may not. It us. may not. But I'm not. I'm not the town planner. I don't know the intricacies of the code like right. this. So I think these questions need to be answered. He may have an answer like, "Yes, we looked at that, but X, Y, Z. These are the reasons why we did what you know we proceeded in the way we proceeded." Exactly. Well, okay. Um, Councilmember Luck, did you have a? Did are you still in favor of moving forward tonight? coming up with something or did you want to wait? Well, if if it's the will of this group, I think we should certainly wait. You know, my, my desire was to get sort of a fact sheet put together. This is an important fact and whether it's correct or not, we need to figure that out. It seems like there is a discrepancy. I would be careful though in, in saying that the town can get whatever it wants um, Thank you. because I think, for example, doing the boundary line elimination, as long as those are interior boundary lines, I think that's a very routine administrative matter, which isn't necessarily used, can be used as leverage with a developer because the code more or less says as long as no other um, uh, uh, you know, property owner is affected by the removal of interior lines, which would be the case with this, then you know, we have to be careful we're not telling our town staff, oh, deny that application, which normally is just a rubber stamp because we want some leverage on the other side. And, and we have to, you know, no matter what happens on that property, economics is gonna drive <laughs> what's being built there. So we have to be aware of that. We don't choose developers, they come 
to Dylan. They talked to the, what's the name of the couple? Hazlitt? Stossels, they come to the Stossels and say, would you be willing to buy? And then somebody says, yeah, let's negotiate a price, et cetera. And, and it, you know, we live in a land still with private property rights. And we, we have to be careful that we we respect those. So I, I don't want to get caught up in, in sort of leveraging a BLE, a boundary line elimination, uh, just to try to get leverage over some some other issue that that I don't think is good government. But that is what you use in, in the event that you have a PUD and you have those facts in front of you and someone, a PUD, is asking for an exception to the zoning code. So if they say to do this, I also want you to eliminate the boundary lines, that's when you have power. That's so, where you're able to negotiate. That's that's right. And 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 the, the PUD, let's be clear, the PUD was a negotiation that started a year and a half ago. I mean, yeah, that's sort of weird. It's it's a, it's it's a, but that is where a lot of the public would have an issue because it wasn't presented to the public to be a part of the negotiation. I, I can't judge that. I sure. I was just a member of the public like y'all, you know, three, four months ago, a year ago, et cetera. Um, but let's be clear so everybody understands. A PUD is a negotiation between a town and a developer and they come together and in a negotiation, you give a little bit, you get a little bit. That's that's how and it along works. those lines. That that that's been that negotiation, the PUD has been approved by this board a couple of times as it you know, cycles through. Yep. So let you know, I, I just want to make sure that that the public understands. And I don't that. know if the people in this room remember the initial concept, which is a three thousand seat indoor amphitheater, an automated parking garage and a much bigger hotel. We don't need to keep talking about so that. because we, There was a lot of negotiation that went from that to what was approved. Not, not really. The council said we would never approve that. And then, and then he came back with something that we had to vote on that night. And the public was never involved. I don't... To him when he came there, or maybe you wouldn't know. I don't know you personally, but Oliver, I did want to address it's not the boundary line elimination that gives you the leverage, it's the fact that to do a boundary line elimination requires an estimated subdivision application. Correct. Right. Your code says land dedication requirement. All subdivisors filing property in a residential zone, RHRM of L and RE, shall be required to dedicate to the town 10% of land area of the proposed subdivision for use by the town for parks, open space, and other similar recreational purposes. I, I don't I don't think on that a BLE boundary line elimination over on the Stossel's property because it's private would require I mean they're just removing their interior lines. I know it's an S3 application, but I can't imagine that they they have to give up a piece of their property to the town. If, I, 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 if that does it, then we're all in trouble. Anybody here who's right. ever tried to remove a boundary, I line, think you're going to give up 10% of that your property to. The and it, you know. But anyway, the mayor, to answer your we question, we need to hear from Ned on what. I, the, I we we do need to hear. Yeah. We we need to get clarification on on yeah. the issue, and and this is the way I framed it up, and this may be helpful, and maybe not, and I'll stop talking in a second. The you've got a you've got the PUD. It's been negotiated, et cetera. That's really not an issue. What what Laura brings up, rightfully so, uh, is that the alternative, a no vote, could simply mean that the developer builds what current code allows, and he would have to go through that S three process to remove the interior boundary lines, et cetera. I, I would like to get some clarification on what that building would look could look like. What he's allowed to build, because I've I've seen all sorts of different, I've seen and a lot of different were. things about what what could be built there if the PUD is rejected. If there's a no vote, the developer still can build because we again live in a country, thankfully, with private property rights, could still build there based on current code. I'd like to get an understanding of what what that is. Mr. Port has shared in the past that that's a 35 foot tall building that goes out to the but that, lot that can't be what it is. It does. What? Cannot be because it's four different lots, five different lots. 200 feet of space per dwelling unit. If he wants to do 240 units, 48,000 square feet needs to go to open space. I need to hear from Ned. 
because I'm not sure you're the expert on this. Okay. I would love to hear from Ned on this. Yeah. You all need to have the chance to have the as well as the public. And I personally think that what has been put out there and the decisions we make weren't starting over and revoking the ballot and starting from ground zero. And that's what I think you as responsible, ethical representatives of our town need to be thinking about. Thank you. Kyle, Renee, are you are you two in favor of moving forward with something tonight or not? If you guys are all not in favor, I'm not sure we're going to get anything. Yeah, I think yeah, based, based on, on no, because I we don't have our expert okay. here, so I don't I don't Without know. Right. So it, it, with that, I think we can end this meeting here tonight. Uh, We're not sure there's a real issue. We need to hear from Ned. Yeah. That may have been put to bed months ago. I'm not as, sure. As you're looking to take the two and like it in place, and I don't think they get changed without people knowing. We need to talk to Ned. This may have been dealt with months ago. I don't know. Okay, so we're not gonna move forward taking any action at this meeting and then uh, I guess further discussion with Jeff and staff on what happens next Tuesday, if anything, but maybe something, so maybe be there. Who knows? Okay, thanks for being here, everyone, and sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Council, for your discussion tonight. I suspect this has been dealt with.